Keeping a day job. Hey! My name is Jerry. Today. People have joined the Occupy movement because they're tired of economic inequality. They want to stop the wars and cut the Pentagon's budget. And we want to see the banksters do a perp walk for wrecking the economy. But all of us earnest, bedwetting leftists need to admit something. We no longer live in a democracy. We live in an empire. Empires do what they want to do. And stopping an empire is not a sprint. It is a marathon. You will need to train. You will need to eat. You will need to find a way to live indoors. In short, you will need to keep a day job. In fact, some of us will need to find day jobs. I'm going to try to address that. Now a little bit about me. I became an activist back in high school when I saw a picture book of the Hibakusha. The Hibakusha were the people burned by the atomic bombs that were dropped on Japan. And the idea that anybody would look at those pictures and say, yeah, that was pretty cool, but let's make more of those weapons and burn lots more of those people, that's what made me an activist. And out of that, I became every other kind of activist you can be. And in 1983, I helped organize the largest protest ever held against nuclear weapons. Ten million people marched worldwide to stop nuclear terror. Yada, yada, old court, yada, yada, right? Okay. So let me tell you about my last arrest. It was in the 80s when Reagan was doing Star Wars. The headquarters of Star Wars was Vandenberg Air Force Base. Vandenberg Air Force Base has more potential death and human misery per square inch than any place else on the planet. They've got hundreds of nuclear weapons stockpiled. They're building battle stations that can fight wars from outer space. And they're experimenting with crowd control, non-lethal and otherwise. So I'm out there protesting the machines of death at Vandenberg Air Force Base. And you see Vandenberg has a giant sign on the front lawn and it says, Vandenberg Air Force Base. Peace is our profession. <laughs> okay, you got 300 nuclear weapons in your basement. I'm not sure what your profession is. Peace would not be my first guess. So that night, I found some paint, I found some beer, I made some changes. And the next morning, all those Air Force kids came driving into Vandenberg Air Force Base past the sign that said, Vandenberg Air Force Base. Peace is our profession. War is just our hobby. Okay, I thought it was funny. My prosecutor did not. <clears throat> Could have charged me with vandalism and disorderly conduct. Instead, I found myself facing felony charges for interfering with the defense of the United States, a five-year penalty. And I didn't serve five years, but I had to be on probation all that time. So I had to lose all my friends. I had to find a day job. I had to find a way to sustain myself. And now I found a day job and I'm not bad at it. So I do what I can. The thing I want to impress on you is all the things I was protesting against all those years ago are still true. Leonard Peltier is still in prison. We're still fighting a drug war that won't stop. We're still bombing the crap out of poor people all over this planet. And now there's the Occupy movement. And you can tell how seriously the Empire takes the Occupy movement by how quickly they crack down on us. Now, people accuse me of being a conspiracy theorist when I say that Obama signed the NDA Military Detention Act because of Occupy. And I say to you, if you don't think there's a connection, you are a coincidence theorist. And all those things that I did all those years ago and all these people who know my background are coming up to me and they're saying, Jerry, what should we do now? Like I'm supposed to know. I do know what doesn't work. Painting funny signs does not work. Marching in big circles around empty government buildings does not work. Writing your Congress creature does not work unless you can sign the letter David Koch. Voting does not work. I've been voting since Jerry Ford was in the White House and I have never had a chance to vote against nuclear weapons. At the same time, I'm pretty damn sure that violence doesn't work. It's not a moral consideration, it's practical. I've been to Vandenberg, trust me, they've got really cool weapons that we don't have. So, if we want to stop the empire, I have a list. Please listen to me, make some notes. Okay. 
Okay, number one, first and foremost, stop working so damn hard. Really. Stop going into your day job and doing all that crazy work. Now you're off the hook for number one if you work in a hospital ER. You're off the hook for number one if you work for Occupy or you work for some nice volunteer organization like Habitat for Humanity. But for the rest of us, we need to admit that most of what we do in our day jobs is facilitating the empire. Now I realize this is a horrible time to tell people to cut back on their work. And I don't want any of you to be slackers, but we all need to figure out how we can push back a little bit. And by the way, if you're doing uncompensated labor, if you're staying an extra hour a day and there are eight of you, if you all push back, maybe they gotta hire somebody else, right? As much as possible, stop working so damn hard. Number two, stop buying crap you don't need. Look, I'm horrible at this. I'm worse than anybody else. But we keep getting our wants and our needs confused. Okay? Rent and food are obviously necessities. The latest smartphone that plays Angry Birds 3D, maybe not so much. And by the way, 15 years ago, no self-respecting liberal would wear shoes made in China. What the fuck happened that we're all buying iPods, iPhones, and iPads, huh? Okay, that's another play. Never mind. As much as possible, stop buying crap you don't need. If we didn't buy crap we didn't need, maybe we wouldn't all have to work so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. number three. Take money you save in step two. And how about the people who are exempt in step one? The folks at Amnesty, the folks at Habitat for Humanity could all use a check right now. And this applies to individuals. These are the folks in Chicago who are, as far as I'm concerned, political prisoners. Prick up a flyer, drop them a line, they're lonely. <laughs> there but for the grace of God and all that. This extends to individuals. And do not confuse money that you give with your 401k program. This is money to stop the empire. Okay, step four. When me and 10 million of my close personal friends marched against nuclear weapons back in 1983, somebody asked Al Haig, who was a former commander of NATO, what he thought of us. And you know what he said? He said, they can march anywhere they want as long as they keep paying their taxes. Okay, uh, Al Haig is the living embodiment of that old rule that military intelligence is a contradiction in terms. Thank you for giving away the game. Here's the reality. The IRS is set up for voluntary compliance from all of us. They don't have a plan if 20 million of us sign our tax returns, dick hurts, and return the envelope empty. Now there's a moral aspect to this as well. As my friends in the peace community keep reminding me, if you're living in the empire and you're paying your taxes, you're behaving yourself, you're not complaining, you're not protesting, you're not getting arrested, then you own Abu Ghraib and you own Guantanamo and you own Sergeant Bales killing kids in Afghanistan. I don't see a way around that. Now I realize not paying your taxes is a huge step and the point of this lecture is to keep you in a day job. So here's plan B. Every year, the IRS lets people take up to 90 days to formally file their taxes. I can tell you right now, the Treasury Department hates this because they want to close the books on the year and there are all these people who haven't sent in. Okay, so what happens if 20 million of us tell the IRS that the dog ate our homework? Um, I'm not sure what the answer is on that. I think it involves crap and green pickles, okay? But go home and think about it. Okay, what was that step? Okay, this is, no, step four and a half. Stop giving the government extra money. I hate to be the one to tell you this, you are not going to win the lottery. And if the money for the lottery really went for education, people would be too fucking smart to buy lottery tickets, okay? 
And then there's these. Besides killing yourself on the installment plan, these are also an excellent way for the government to get extra money out of you. And they're also a great way to subvert your desire to rebel. I don't know how to explain this to people often enough. You are not a rebel if you smoke Marlboros or American Spirit. You are not a rebel if you take your bonus money from working for Goldman Sachs and buy yourself a Harley Davidson. You are a poser. People who buy things they don't need to impress people they don't know are one of the ways the empire keeps us in line. A genuine rebel takes a principled, uncompromising stance. We need more rebels in this world. Be a real rebel. Okay, now step five. Thank you. Stop tweeting twits. Turn off your internet's machine. Go upstairs and shake hands with your neighbors. Your neighbors are at least as pissed off as you are, and they don't know who to blame. Now, you may not be able to convince your neighbors to sign their tax returns, dick hurts. But you've just made a bridge to your neighbors. And I got news for you about your neighbors. Your neighbors are going to be the ones who tell you when the FBI comes by looking for your ass, okay? Uh, we need to uh, all make uh, friends uh, with our neighbors. Okay, this is, uh, this is number six. This is easy, but... Don't make fun people of poor people. Change. Why are you wasting your time? People have to change themselves to do what you say. Let, let them talk. Let them talk. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's sign up over here. Yeah, sign up over there. I got 20 minutes here, sir. Then you can talk. You can talk now. Number six. Don't make fun of poor people. Every time a leftist or an occupied person makes fun of poor people, both Koch brothers pop a stiffy. That's why I can't watch C-SPAN anymore. 